For those of you that don't know, I'm Ben Dixie and I designed and built a coaxial helicopter in my shed. I did a whole series of videos documenting the process of teaching myself to hover before a dry shaft failure ended the project prematurely. I got as far as hovering for about a minute or so and a maximum altitude of three feet. My last video on this project was six months ago and I explained the drawbacks to my chosen design. I've now had time to think about this and I would like to share some thoughts I have with regards to the project and any future helicopter projects. In the last six months I've missed having a working helicopter a lot. It was extremely exciting and nothing has ever come close to it. I will be building another and I'll be able to use the knowledge learned. Collective pitch will definitely be included this time. Fixed pitch, as I chose, isn't something I think is a good idea and it might explain why the following aircraft never made it past a few prototypes. Let's first look at the Nolan Brothers coaxial helicopter. It had a fixed pitch rotor system which means it cannot auto-rotate. Instead, the Brothers Jack and Herb included two engines. If one engine failed, then it could still be brought down with the one remaining engine. It couldn't hover on one engine, but it could fly with forward speed. There was never any demonstration videos of an engine out landing, and I can explain why. When you have fixed pitch rotors, you cannot reduce the lift to zero instantaneously. You have to wait for a fairly gradual decay in lift as the rotors spool down. This means with a run on landing, the rotors will be producing a lot of lift, and skidding along a surface with forward momentum, a forward dynamic rollover would be almost unavoidable. The brothers still did an incredible job and this was a long time ago. Information at that time would have been very hard to come by. Even now it's hard to find particularly on coaxial designs. They have extensively tested the machine at speed and flew it at altitude. There was another machine that followed from the brothers research called the Air Scooter 2. This was a more professional attempt at a personal helicopter marketed as a low flying toy and at the time of researching the machine I didn't understand why it didn't go to market as planned. It didn't have two engines, instead it had a single lightweight four-stroke engine specifically designed for this purpose. It was thought that a four-stroke would give it the reliability it needed. Relying solely on one engine with a machine to be sold to the public wasn't a good idea. You can't expect everyone who buys one to keep the altitude to a maximum of a few feet. As confidence grows, so will the height and forward speed. With forward speed comes extra lift and distance above the ground will naturally increase. The next fixed pitch coaxial is the Gen H4. This is a superb attempt at personal flight. With four two-stroke engines, it has enough redundancy and power to land vertically with an engine out situation. The drivetrain on this machine is a work of art. Yaw is achieved by means of a differential and an electric motor inside the gearbox. This is a much better idea than tail vanes in the downwash. Tail vanes work okay, but they don't have enough authority at times and will also be affected by weather vaning. The wind will want to yaw the nose of the aircraft into the wind. Most of the time this could be an advantage, but there will be times when this is not wanted. I don't know what's going on with the Gen H4 and I haven't seen videos on one in private use, but they were apparently offered for sale. As mentioned, the engineering is superb and that usually comes at a price. This could be another issue. All these machines have fixed pitch rotors and I now understand why this is so undesirable. Part of the reason I chose a fixed pitch coaxial was its simplicity. Swashplate control and collective pitch, even on a single rotor, look complex. Now I'm considering a double swashplate coaxial, perhaps even with differential collective. What is differential collective, you may ask? Well, this is where you increase the collective pitch on one rotor and decrease it on another. The overall lift remains the same, but the torque on the airframe is no longer balanced. This will yaw the craft in the desired direction and is much more effective than tail vanes. However, there is one drawback. In auto rotation, the pedals reverse. This is because instead of the gearbox driving the rotors, the rotors are driving the gearbox, and so a reversal of direction occurs. This would obviously be very confusing for a pilot during an auto rotation. What Kamov have done is devise a mechanism to keep the pedal functionality the same in both modes. During auto rotation, blade pitch is low and the mechanism comes into effect at low pitch settings. A side effect of low pitch settings is low torque, which means differential collective becomes less effective. That's why you'll see large tail vanes on Kamov coaxial helicopters. The large tail will help weather vane the helicopter into the wind and then minor adjustments can be made with hinge flaps or rudders. If we look at the Benson B9 coaxial helicopter, it had rotor brakes to achieve your. It also drove the rotors via differential. 
which meant it was possible to slow down one rotor and speed up the other. The downside with this is the machine would sink as power was being lost through friction, but the differential did mean you could drive two different sized rotors and keep it torque balanced. The larger one would spin slower and the smaller one would spin faster. The idea was to reduce the negative effect of aerodynamic interaction between the two rotors. Igor Benson had a very clever and inventive mind. So I have some options to consider. The coaxial is certainly intriguing and there seems to be more and more being built and flown online. Quite a few from China and there is also the SCH2A which you can buy for now for about $35,000. A lot of money for most people, but considering the engineering that goes into a coaxial helicopter, I don't think it's overpriced. If I had the money, I would buy one. If they keep selling, maybe eventually you'll be able to see them second hand. Another advantage of a coaxial is that the rotor diameter is smaller. The same as if you were to have a four bladed single rotor with the added advantage of being able to fold two of the blades alongside their partners. It's a compact design, just a little taller, which helps with hanger space. People think coaxials are more stable, but I wouldn't agree with that. I would say they are easier to fly because there is no torque balancing to maintain, like there is with a single rotor tail rotor design. People also think that a coaxial provides some sort of gyroscopic stability, but this isn't true. It is no more stable than a conventional helicopter and gyroscopic stability is non-existent in any rotor that isn't being operated in a vacuum. Aerodynamic forces control the rotor and that overpowers gyroscopic forces. That's why the rotor RPM drops when moving the rotor to a new orbit. Energy is lost moving a rotor that wants to continue spinning in the same plane. Anyway, I like coaxials, but it would certainly be much easier to build a single rotor. You can buy plans for single rotor helicopters like the AW95, and this would be super easy in comparison to designing your own. It's tempting to be able to have a tried and tested design all done for me just much less of a challenge. I'm intrigued with what the amazing DIY Projects channel is doing. He's building a man carrying helicopter but with a slowly rotating rotor. This is more efficient because as we know drag quadruples with speed. The downside to a slowly rotating rotor is control. A wind gust will have much more effect on a micro light aeroplane for example than a fighter jet. There is always a trade-off but it will be very interesting to see how the amazing DIY Projects channel develops this idea. So to recap, the unavoidable drawbacks of fixed pitch rotors are Auto rotation isn't possible. Perhaps not necessary in a machine only designed to fly a few feet, but it can still cushion the landing. A landing with any forward speed would likely result in a dynamic forwards rollover. Reaction to changes in lift is slow. That means any wind gas will suddenly affect lift and that cannot be reacted to fast enough. To add to that, I would suggest teaching yourself to fly fixed pitch can be more hazardous as reducing lift in an instant isn't possible. This all means that I should not fix the dry shaft on my coaxial. Instead, I should adapt or rebuild it to include collective pitch as a minimum. If you need collective pitch or blade feathering, then you might as well use swash baits to control the machine. As some of you will know, I'm building a flying boat at the moment and this will be a lot of fun to fly I'm sure. But the interest with home built helicopters is not going away. The flying boat videos don't seem to be as popular as the helicopter ones, which I can understand as the channel was built on helicopter interest. So I would like to ask you if I should continue to post videos on the boat project or just wait until I'm back onto rotary craft. I don't mind either way as the decision to build the flying boat wasn't based on making videos about it, but I do like sharing projects and information if it's of interest. Meanwhile, I had a visitor to my workshop who I've been trying to get on the channel for a while. Right, this is my friend John, my best friend John actually. And I've known John since he was only 16 stone, <laughs> which was many, many meals ago. So how are you doing, John? When you finish your tea, obviously. Uh, I'm yeah. okay. I'm, I'm feeling a bit hungry, actually. Now you've reminded oh. me of that. Oh, yeah. Thank, got a thanks, cake. Ben. Yeah. You got a bit of cake? No, I think, I think I'm all caked yeah. out for today. You don't have to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to swear at you. Okay. <laughs> right, recording again. Uh, do you want to have a look at uh, what I've been building? Not really. No, all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. What right. have you been building this time then, Ben? Well, this, this, is the, um, this is the tail of the wing and ground effect vehicle. Okay. So I've just been putting these... Hinges on here. Okay, mind if I have a little look? No, it's not. 
I'm sure well, you'll find something to criticise. Why would you say that? <laughs> why would you say that? I wouldn't have done it like that. I think that's going to fall out, if I'm honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's oh, a little... good job you're picking up on that. Yeah, well, you're welcome. Good job you came. Yeah. So, so you say this is the tail. Mm. Um, is this the... Forgive the uh, vernacular. Is this up and down, or is this left and right? Uh, that is the elevator. Got it. That's hinged there, and the rudder's behind you. Okay, okay. I'm going to say that would be quite a big rudder on the back. Yes. Yeah. Um, right oh. And what sort of weight is the, are these? Can I oh, yeah, pick gently it pick yeah, it up? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Mine can't. <laughs> Sorry, it's not mine. <laughs> Sorry, not mine Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the owner. It didn't dent it, I promise. Okay. That's light. Yeah. That's light. Heavier than I thought, though. Right. Yeah. And what is that aircraft grade aluminium or just aluminium? No, no just 6063 is what it is, which is general purpose aluminium. Right. Right, so yeah, what's, what's your question? Uh, um, I've forgotten now. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So, in the end time. Um, no rush. When you, when you make, you, you just explained to me about you're going to have the section coming out here mm -hmm. and down around. And then out around here, yeah, give more of a, I guess, wing surface area. Yes. And then your rudder. So I'm going to move this about mm -hmm. banging the car. Yeah, carry on. Your rudder is going to go like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So my question: How do you know how much sweep to let it have? Well, because obviously having it go too far is going yeah. to be Pointless. Yeah, well, I can't work that out, but I can measure what angles of rudder deflection there is on other aircrafts of similar size. Okay. And compare, and that is the way I do a lot of this stuff. So you're going to copy somebody? Yes, copy what yeah. works. Yeah. 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 There's no point reinventing <laughs> the wheel if the wheel already works. No. Uh, the only other thing I'd just say on camera, if I can put that down without knocking my cup of tea over, um, I'm very impressed with this. I don't think I'd leave it with tape. No. I don't think tape's going to do any good when you get out in the water. No. Um, just a little tip. Yep. Thanks for that. Concern for a friend. I wouldn't have picked up on that. I know. You're welcome. <laughs>